Sutra. Ananda said to the Buddha, "Won't honored one, it is truly as the Dharma King has said. The condition of enlightenment pervades the ten directions, clear, everlasting, and by nature, neither produced nor extinguished. How does it differ then from the first Brahma Kapila's teaching of the profound truth, or from the teaching of the ascetics who throw ashes on themselves, or from the other externalist sects?" That say there is a real self which pervades the ten directions. Commentary in response to Shakyamuni Buddha's discussion of is and is not, Ananda said to the Buddha, "Won't honored one, it is truly as the Dharma King has said, the condition of enlightenment pervades the ten directions, clear, everlasting, and by nature neither produced nor extinguished." Clear refers to what is pure and tranquil. Take, for example, a bowl of muddy water. We wouldn't say it was clear, but after the silt and sand have settled, so that you can see the bottom. So we say it is clear. The nature of the condition of enlightenment is pure, clear, everlasting, and neither produced nor extinguished. How does it differ? Then, from the first Brahma Kapila's teaching of the profound truth, or from the teaching of the ascetics who throw ashes on themselves, or from the other externalist sects that say there is a real self which pervades the ten directions, the first Brahma Kapila said that he had descended from the great Brahma heaven, a god born among people. And that in the future he would be born in the great Brahma heaven according to his resolve, he said. In the future, all of us will return to the great Brahma heaven. He was a proponent of the Brahma heaven. Brahma means pure and Kapila, as I explained earlier. However, I believe that no one remembers means the external path of the yellow head. Do you remember Mantanji's daughter? She made her mother make use of the former Brahma Heaven mantra of the Kapilas, the very sect being discussed here. The profound truth discussed by Eastern paths has also been explained in that dull, dark, inactivate state one doesn't know anything at all. Profound means a total lack of perception. You might say that one becomes drunk, and yet one isn't drunk. You might say that one has taken drugs, and yet one hasn't. It is simply that one doesn't know anything at all. In India, there is an external path which practices asceticism. The adherents say they want to live a natural existence, so they don't wear very much clothing or wash their bodies. And they lie in ashes and roll around in them until their entire bodies were covered with them. These are the externalist, externalist ascetics who throw ashes on themselves. There is another externalist sect whose adherents sleep on beds of nails. They hammer nails into a bed and then they sleep on. Top of them, the nails don't pierce their flesh, and they say it is because they have a vara, indestructible body. Would you say that is treating people, or isn't it? There are another externalist sects whose adherents cultivate non-beneficial ascetic practices, such as those who don't eat food but only eat grass or the leaves of trees. All of these sects are included in those Ananda refers to as believing in a true self that pervades the ten directions. But as to the worth of their practices, although they endure extreme discomfort, their work will not lead to ultimate success. For instance, the non-beneficial practice of sleeping on beds of nails and having the nails. Not pious one's flesh is not of any particular worth. After all, a pig's skin is more or less impenetrable by nails. Do pigs therefore have the way? Nails can't pierce a cow's hide. Do cows therefore have the way? No. So this is a bit of practice which is not beneficial. You should not make a mistake here and think they are necessarily endowed with 
a very indestructible body just because, as said, they consider themselves endowed with one. In fact, it is a false notion. It's just like having a pig skin or a cow's hide, and it's certainly not anything extraordinary. They practice this method every day, and so they accomplish that kind of fusion and become endowed with that particular talent. But it does not count as any kind of spiritual skill, nor does it mean they have the way. Ananda asked the first come one, "You say the condition of enlightenment pervades the ten directions. What is the difference between it and the true self, which they say pervades the ten directions?" Sutra. Also, in the past, the world honored one gave a lecture on Mount Lanka, explaining the principle thoroughly for the sake of great wisdom, Bodhisattva and others. Externalist sects always speak of spontaneity. I speak of causes and conditions, which is an entirely different principle. Commentary. Ananda continues. Also in the past, the world honored one gave a lecture on Mount Lanka, explaining the principle thoroughly for the sake of great wisdom, Bodhisattva and others. When Lankavatara Sutra was spoken, the Bodhisattva great wisdom was the interlocutor, just as in the Suragama Sutra, the Venerable Ananda is the interlocutor, and others means that not only Great Wisdom Bodhisattva, but many other Bodhisattvas were there as well. The World Honored Ones spoke the doctrine that externalist sects always speak of spontaneity. The various externalist sects. At that time, constantly explained the doctrine of spontaneity. What doctrine is that? This is what they say: Who unloosed the rivers and seas and piled up the mountain peaks? Who sharpened the thorns and brambles? Who painted the birds and beasts? Of all there is, none has a creator. Therefore, I say that it comes into being spontaneously. Who started the seas? You can't name the person who began the seas, nor can you find the person who initiated the rivers. Also, in China, there was an emperor Yu who tamed the waters. There probably wasn't that kind of talent yet in India. Who took the earth and piled it into mountains? Who created the mountain peaks? Who is it? They are so. How is it they are so high? By asking who made them. They come to the conclusion that they arose spontaneously. Spontaneously, a river appeared, a sea came into existence. Spontaneously, there were mountains, the thorns and brambles, the birds and beasts. Absolutely everything, without any help from people, is produced of itself. Of all there is, none has a creator. Therefore, I say that it comes into being spontaneously. But I, but I speak of causes and conditions. Here, Ananda is quoting what the Buddha said earlier. Buddha, you explained the drama of causes and conditions, which is not the same state. It is not the same as the externalist sect's view of spontaneity. However, the doctrine here you are speaking now seems the same as the doctrine spoken by externalist sects. You say that the condition of enlightenment pervades the ten directions, and the externalist sects say that their true self also pervades the ten directions. Isn't that the same? The name is different. That's all. Your condition of enlightenment is more than likely the true self, and their true self is more than likely the condition of enlightenment. Isn't that the way it is? What is meant by the cause and the condition that the Buddha speaks of? I have often told you the cause is the seed. What contributes to its growth are the conditions. Planting a seed in the ground is a cause. Conditions are the aiding factors which contribute to the growth. Mud, dirt, water, manure, sunlight, and other such things are called the conditions which aid. And contrib contribute to its growth. Buddha, you said that everything consists of causes and conditions, and that the causes and conditions break up the externalist sect's drama of spontaneity. Causes and conditions are not the same as spontaneity, and so they destroy the theory of spontaneity. 
but your condition of enlightenment and the externalist sects true self both pervade the ten directions. The ten directions extend only so far, and if yours pervades it and theirs pervades it, they must be the same. Sutra. Now, as I contemplate the nature of enlightenment, as spontaneous, as neither produced nor extinguished, and as apart from all empty falseness and inversion, they seem to have nothing to do with your causes and conditions or the spontaneity advocated by others. Would you please enlighten us on this point, lest we should fall into dead end paths, thus enabling us to obtain the true light, the bright nature of wonderful enlightenment? Commentary now, as I contemplate the nature of enlightenment, as spontaneously, as spontaneous, I carefully contemplate the enlightened nature which the world honored one spoke of as being spontaneous. It is neither produced nor extinguished. Isn't that spontaneity? It is apart from all empty falseness and inversion, apart from all upside down characteristics and from the upside down mind. It seems to have nothing to do with your causes and conditions or the spontaneity advocated by others. It doesn't seem to be causes and conditions, and it also is different from spontaneity. But then again, it seems to be the same. This is what is meant by seems to be and yet is not. Would you please enlighten us on this point, lest we should fall into different paths? Buddha, how can you teach me so that I won't believe in the theories of those externalist sects? Devon paths refer to externalist sects, thus enabling us to obtain the true mind, the bright nature of wonderful enlightenment. How can I obtain my true mind? I ask the Buddha to have compassion and instruct me. Sutra, the Buddha told Ananda, now I have instructed you with such expedience in order to tell you the truth, yet you do not awaken to it but mistake it for spontaneity. Commentary The Buddha is devoid of a temper, but it is probable he was frowning, frowning when he said this because the small disciples much too confused. The Buddha told Ananda, now I have instructed you with such experience in order to tell you the truth. I have been explaining this and that aspect of it. I have already explained it seven or eight ways. This is the ninth of the ten manifestations of sin, and you still don't understand. How can you be this way? Experience as skillful, provisional dharma doors which are not actual. They are a case of regarding the opportunities and dispensing the teaching in order to speak Dharma for people. The Buddha looks to see what doctrine he should use to instruct Ananda and then uses a clever, wonderful, provisional, expedient Dharma, such as the various analogies and ways of manifesting the thing he has already used and such as his questioning Ananda about the mind. Truths refers to the true and actual dharma the Buddha has also explained, and you still have not awakened. The Buddha was very put out with Ananda when he said that, after all that I've said to you, after all the principles that I've explained, you still don't listen, and you haven't understood in the least. Instead, you produce doubts about its being spontaneity. You still compare the doctrine I explained with the spontaneity of the external elite sects. You are really making a mistake. How can you be so dense? How can you compare them? They are not the same at all. Sutra Ananda, if it definitely was spontaneous, you should be able to distinguish the substance of the spontaneity. Commentary Ananda, let me tell you. If it definitely was spontaneous, if you are determined to say that the doctrine I explained is the same as the spontaneity of the externalist sects, you should be able to distinguish the substance of the spontaneity. Now we will examine this spontaneity and make it clear and delineate it. The spontaneity has a substance, 
They say, for example, who loosed the rivers? Rivers come into existence spontaneously, and so there is still a river. Who loosed the seas? They say the seas exist spontaneously, and so there is still a sea. The sea is the basic substance of spontaneity. It still has a substance. They say, why pile up the mountains? No person could make a mountain, so the mountains are spontaneously born. So there is still the substance of a mountain. So the substance of the mountain is the substance of spontaneity. Now, where is the spontaneous substance of my drama? Speak up. Sutra. Now you look into the wonderful bright scene. What is this self? Does the scene take bright light as itself? Does it take darkness as itself? Does it take emptiness as itself? Does it take solid objects as itself? Commentary. You still have not understood, so I will explain it for you further. You listen. The Buddha presents another theory to reveal to him that it is separate from all ordinary seeing. Now you look into the wonderful bright seeing. What is itself? Use your mind again to take a look. What self is there in the condition of your enlightened seeing's wonderful brightness? What is your seeing's basic substance? You say the thing is spontaneous. If it is spontaneous, it must have a substance. What is the basic substance of the thing? Tell me. Does the thing take bright light as itself? Does the thing take light as its spontaneous basic substance? Does it take darkness as itself? Does darkness make up the spontaneous substance of the thing? Does it take emptiness as itself? Does it take emptiness to make up its spontaneous basic substance, or does it take solid objects as itself, or does a form make up its spontaneous basic substance? Speak up. Now he has asked Ananda, and Ananda will have a comeback. But before he can speak, the Buddha offers his own refutations. Sutra, Ananda, if itself consists in light, you should not see darkness. Moreover, if it takes darkness as the substance of itself, you should not see solid objects. Continuing in the same way, if it takes all dark appearances as itself, then when it is light, the seeing nature is cut off and extinguished. And how can you see light? Commentary: The Buddha explains it for Ananda a little more deeply. Ananda. If itself consists in light, you should not see darkness. If you take light to be the basic substance of spontaneity, and if you say seeing is the same as spontaneity, then when it is dark, the light should be cut off and extinguished. That is, it should disappear, and so you should not see darkness. After all, you say light. Is its basic substance. So how could it see when it is dark? Moreover, if it takes emptiness as a substance of itself, you should not see solid objects. By solid objects is meant places which cannot be seen through. If you take emptiness to be the spontaneous basic substance of your seeing, your seeing should disappear in the face of solid objects. Without emptiness, its own substance is gone. Continuing the same way, if it takes all dark appearances as itself, then when it is light, the seeing nature is cut off and extinguished. And how can you see light? The principle holds in every case. The seeing nature would be extinguished when there is light. Thus, to say that darkness is its basic substance is also a mistake. Sutra Ananda said, "I am certain that." The nature of this wonderful thing is not spontaneous. Now I discern that it is produced from causes and conditions, but I do not yet have it clear in my mind. I now ask the first common how this idea is consonant with the nature of causes and conditions. Commentary: Ananda said before that it was not causes and conditions. Now he says that it is. Ananda can. Also, can fluctuate. Ananda said, "I am certain that the nature of this wonderful thing is not spontaneous. 
Certainly, just as you say, the subtle, wonderful thing at sense, which sees everything, is not spontaneous, because it has no substance. Now I discern that it is produced from causes and conditions. He doesn't say now that he considers; he says he discerns the doctrine. But I do not yet have it clear in my mind. I think the thing is produced from causes and conditions. But then again, it seems not to not be in accord with principle. It seems that there is no such thing. That's what I think. But my mind is not absolutely clear about it. What do you think of him? He doesn't understand, but he still keeps trying on hats. Now he is trying on the causes and conditions hat. I now ask the first come one how this idea is consonant with the nature of causes and conditions. World or not one, how can this doctrine be explained? How can it fit with the nature of causes and conditions? Please explain this to me, Buddha. Now it was not the Buddha who said that. The thing as sense is produced from the nature of causes and conditions. It was Ananda who said it, and he himself doesn't understand. He wants the Buddha to explain it. Basically, what Ananda said lacks principle. He doesn't understand the doctrine. First, he says it is spontaneity. Then he says it is causes and conditions. And then, because he doesn't understand how it could be, he wants someone else to explain it. Meeting someone like Ananda is enough to give one a headache. Sutra, the Buddha said, "You say it is causes and conditions. I ask you again, because you are now seeing the thing nature manifests. It is it because of light that the thing exists? Is it because of darkness that the thing exists? Is it because of emptiness that the thing exists? Is it because of solid objects that the thing exists?" Commentary: The Buddha said, "You say it is causes and conditions. You want me to explain to you how it is consonant with the nature of causes and conditions. But it's you who say it is causes and conditions. Well, I will explain about causes and conditions for you. But first, I want to ask you something. I ask you again, because you are now seeing the thing nature manifests." Your thing nature appears before you. Is it because of light that the thing exists? Is it because of darkness that the thing exists? Is it because of emptiness that the thing exists? Is it because of solid objects that the thing exists? In the end, how does your thing essence come into being? The Buddha is truly one of great kindness and great compassion. He encounters someone who keeps need needing the being cut. So to speak, who keeps going back and forth around and about, and with the utmost compassion, he still keeps explaining to him. It's probably the case that Ananda has been spoiled by the Buddha. He was the Buddha's favorite cousin, and he was in the habit of being allowed to say and do as he pleased. He's just like these disciples of mine now, who are not afraid of their teacher. They dare to say anything at all, right? To the teacher's face. When I was in Hong Kong, my disciples didn't dare open their mouths when they were around me. They were very afraid of me. You American disciples are not afraid of your teacher, and I don't wish to make you afraid of me. So for now, it's yes, okay. Sutra Ananda, if light brings it into existence. You should not see darkness, and if it exists because of darkness, you should not see light. It is the same with emptiness and solid objects. Commentary, Ananda. You should know that I have already explained many similar doctrines. Now I will explain it once again for you, Ananda. If light brings it into existence, if you say the seeing exists because of light, you should not see darkness. When it is dark, you should not be able to see darkness. If it exists because of darkness, you should not see light. If you say, "Ah, it is not because of light that exists, but because of darkness," there is seeing because of darkness. Then, when it is light, you your seeing would disappear. Why? You rely on the darkness in order to see. Now that the darkness is gone, your seeing is also gone. 
The very same doctrine applies in other cases. If it is because of emptiness that the thing exists, then where there are solid objects, it would disappear. If it is because of solid objects that the thing exists, then where there is emptiness, it would disappear. But that isn't how it is with you. You can see when it is light, you can see when it is dark, you can see where there is emptiness, and you can see where there are, there are solid objects. How could your suggestion that the thing is based on causes and conditions be correct? Sutra. Moreover, Ananda, does the thing derive from the condition of light? Does the thing derive from the condition of darkness? Does the thing derive from the condition of emptiness? Does the thing derive from the condition of solid objects? Commentary. I spoke before about causes. Now I will ask you about conditions. I will explain it a little more clearly for you. Do you see how compassionate the Buddha is? He sees Ananda still standing there, wide-eyed, staring, having still not understood. So he explains it again. Moreover, Ananda, does the thing derive from the condition of light? Does the thing derive from the condition of darkness? Does the thing follow upon light or does it follow upon darkness? Does the thing derive from the condition of emptiness? Does the thing derive from the condition of solid objects? Is it from the causal condition of emptiness that there is seeing? Or is it from the causal condition of solid objects that there is seeing? Sutra, Ananda, if it exists because of the condition of emptiness, you should not see solid objects. If it, is, it exists because of the condition of solid objects, you should not see emptiness. It is the same with light and darkness. Commentary, Ananda, if it exists because of the condition of emptiness, if it is because of the emptiness that there is seeing, you should not see solid objects. The principle here is about the same as the one explained above. But because of the Buddha's compassion, he explains it in great detail, not fearing the trouble involved. If it exists because of the condition of solid objects, if it is due to solid objects that there is seeing, you should not see emptiness. It is the same with light and darkness, the doctrine of it being from the condition of light or from the condition of darkness is the same as the doctrine of its being from emptiness or from solid objects. Sutra First, you should know that the essential enlightened wonderful brightness is due to neither causes nor conditions, and it does not arise spontaneously. Commentary. Now the Buddha again rouses Ananda from his stupidity. First, you should know, don't continue to be so confused that the essential enlightened wonderful brightness, the seeing, is due to neither causes nor conditions. It is not because of causes. It is not because of conditions. And it does not arise spontaneously. Now, do you know? Sutra. It is not that which is not spontaneous. It is not that it is not. Nor is it that it is not not. It is not that which is or is not. Commentary. It is something transcending all contraries, relativities, and partialities. It is not that which is not spontaneous. Now, this certainly does not say that the thing essence does arise spontaneously. The double negative means that there is not even no spontaneous arisal. It is not that is not, nor is it that it is not not. There is neither a negation not a lack of negation. There is no is and there is no is not. It is not that which is and is not. There isn't any correct and incorrect. You can't think about this with your mind that makes distinctions. Once you think about is and is not, you have left the doctrine of the seeding, the seeing essence. Then what is there? Sutra. Any dharma is that which is apart from all characteristics. Commentary, if you separate from all empty and false characteristics, 
that is the true and actual drama. Don't base your skill on empty and false characteristics. Any drama is that which is apart from all characteristics. If you can be separated from all empty and false characteristics, that is your journey in a sense, that is the journey wonderful drama. What are these characteristics? They are the characteristics of false thought. To be apart from false thought is the wonderful drama of true sadness. If you do not separate yourself from the characteristics of false thinking, you do not unite with the wonderful drama of true sadness.